Okay. Um, we've been talking. <laughs> this is uh, Mazin Khalil from Sudan. Uh, he was brought up in Liverpool, Falkirk, Dundee, Dubai. He lives and works in Sudan. He's invented this incredible uh, modern health device that is now spreading out uh, throughout Africa and throughout the Middle East and certainly will be in Europe and the United States sometime soon. Um, He's got a company called Sudamed. Med, I'll get him to explain it himself. Yeah. Yeah. Currently, it's valued at $138.7 million. He's um, a doctor, he's a surgeon. He comes from a family of medics. Um, I asked him, could I get in on his business? Is there was any chance of me getting a few shares? He said, no, thanks. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Mazin. Uh, very nice of you to look after your mates. Here he is, he's a very brilliant guy. <laughs> Mazin. <laughs> I'm trying to learn it. Sawadi. Um, how are you guys? Um, Sudan is considered one of the poorest countries in the world, with a GDP of less than 1,500. Career prospects, very slim. Sudan is now seeing the greatest recorded history of brain drain with an estimated 80% youth looking for jobs outside of the country. As a freshly graduated doctor, I actually stumbled into the world of careers, paychecks, and making my own money with a sense of awe and excitement. That cliche, this is the first day of the rest of your world, was actually true, or the rest of your life, sorry, was actually true. It was the first step towards the realization of all my dreams. I was on the path to becoming a world-renowned doctor, surgeon, and with all that that brings, the big house, the cars, the money, maybe even someday a private jet. Yeah, don't laugh, because so after eight months of being unemployed, <laughs> you can imagine how the dreams became a little bit dull. I finally got a job in a teaching hospital. I was making the equivalent of $80 a month. When I talked to my friends and colleagues living in other countries, UK, US, etc., I found out they were making between $4,000 to $7,000 for the exact same job. The dream changed. The dream now became to leave the country and go get those jobs, just like almost every young doctor in Sudan. A year after I graduated, and with meager savings, a couple thousand dollars, from doing a range of odd jobs while being a doctor, I established Sudamed a company that is dedicated to providing healthcare solutions. Within the last three years, we have grown to almost 700 employees. We operate in nine countries, and we have been the recipients of seven international awards, including the MIT Best Startup Award, <laughs> including MIT Best Startup Award and the King Abdullah Award for Youth Innovation and Achievement, sorry, it's really long, in Jordan. Being a global or multinational company, we are exposed to the inequality of labor rights, pay structures, cultural norms, between the different countries we established in. Some countries, like my own, have very low standards of pay, while other countries that we work in, for example, the UAE, have much higher standards, especially for technical or managerial work. A programmer working in Sudan, for instance, might get paid 10 times less than a programmer in our company working out of our Dubai office. Many global corporations take advantage of the lack of labor rights, labor laws, worker rights, and the cheap labor of developing countries. We all know examples. For example, Microsoft and their call centers in India, Nike, Adidas, and their sweatshops that were in China and Thailand, where people would get paid about a dollar a day. When I have a friend in Arizona that flips burgers, from McDonald's and gets paid $9 an hour. The reason? Profitability. And while this is profitable in the short term, I'm confident that this is both wrong and not in the best interest of a company in the long term. We as a company found this to be unjust and also realized that while our largest employee base was currently in Sudan, we were losing a lot of our best employees to the Gulf, to Europe, to the States. After actually spending time and money training them, 
our employee turnover in Sudan was at least 50 times more than it was in Dubai. We knew we had two choices. Either keep losing our best employees or make a change. I also remembered that feeling of inadequacy when comparing my salary to the, uh, my salary in Sudan to my salary of my friends in the US or the UK. It actually undermined my personal dignity. This is when we adopted the, san the standard pay policy that has been in effect since January 2015. No matter which office, which country, based on the highest salary available, all equivalent employees, for example, programmers, would get paid the same. Today, we're proud to announce that we have an employee satisfaction. <laughs> Today, we're proud to announce that we have an employee satisfaction rate of 97%. And even, <laughs> and even though our overheads have increased dramatically, we reach record sales from Last year till today, we have made a 1,200% increase in sales. When balanced with our overheads, our profits increased by almost 500%. Since the adoption of our standard pay policy, our valuation actually increased three times, and we are now valued at just north of a quarter of a billion dollars. The old norms, the rules of using cheap labor to increase profitability, doesn't have to be true. I don't agree with this common practice of global companies who hire people in poor countries like my own to pay them low wages. Global business has a responsibility to not hold back poorer nations trying to overcome poverty. By exploiting cheap labor and slowing the growth of the economy with low wages. Richard Branson once said, Take care of your employees, and they will take care of your business. Sudamed is living proof that that is 100% true. From this summit, I want to make a personal request. To all those here that are working in multinational corporations around the world, challenge your employers. Challenge for fair pay and equality. Let us move forward as a world. Let's abolish the terms first world country and third world country. Thank you.